and kind of withstand attacks that way. Uh, but you've got to be careful that there's options uh, that can cause a lot of problems. We saw uh, Max Airstreams yesterday from the Kingdra based off Hurricane. Can't be, you know, throwing out an Amoongus if it's just going to get caught by those. I think if you don't have a clear and concise answer here, this could get dicey uh, for Zhao. Well, let's go ahead and find out exactly how this game number one is going to go and jump right into the action, shall we? We do have a win and in on our hands, which means that the winner of this match is going to make it into the global finals and the other player will have their journey cut just a little bit short. But here it is, the leads coming out for both of these players and for Joao, it is going to be that Dragapult and Amoongus. And for Juan, we have that Kingdra and that Politoed. So really not holding back any punches here. Doesn't even have to set up the rain themselves for this Kingdra is going to have that Politoed's ability drizzle, be able to set up the rain for it. It's going to get immediate access to Swift Swim as well and be one of the fastest things around. You don't even have to worry about max air streams when you're setting up a Swift Swim for yourself. So uh, a lot of positives here, I think, for uh, Duan. Uh, it's just, it's going to be so hard to deal with this Amoongus on a turn where it can Rage Powder, right? It, you've got to be so respectful of that and maybe try and weave in a couple moves just to deal with that this turn and accept that the Dragapult's going to be safe for a turn or, or, or two. Yeah, but we're already seeing Juan just go ahead and say, hey, I'm really fast right now. We've got the speed on our side with that Swift Swim ability on the Kingdra. So we'll be Dynamaxing super early and Joao actually going to be Dynamaxing too. Wouldn't surprise me to see this Dragapult take to the field and see if it can dish out some big damage against that Kingdra, but Kingdra going to be moving first. I think it has to. I think that's the only way, but Juan's in a really good position with this Kingdra to say, well, as long as you don't get me, or if, even if I land a max move that lowers your offensive stats early on, um, I'm going to be in a, a solid position. So uh, Amoongus does Rage Powder, uh, and I think a lot of pressure on this Amoongus to stick around for as long as possible, uh, which is going to be very difficult when you look at the moves coming out from Juan's Kingdra. Yeah, ooh, the Max Wormwind coming out here, which is going to go into the Amoongus, but critically will be able to, well, actually not be able to drop the attack because of that clear body ability. So Max Wormwind now coming out for the Dragapult and Kingdra ooh. barely hangs on. So close to getting knocked out there. These Dragon types would love to just trade Max Wormwinds, but the Amoongus throws a spanner in that wrench for Zhao. Uh, that said though, the Politoed is following up with an Ice Beam, uh, knowing that the Amoongus is the threat. Uh, it can take one attack away. It cannot take two without getting knocked out. So an early advantage carved out here, just in the Pokemon count for Juan. Uh, and I think that could be big. No redirection this turn means that Dragapult's gotta be at least a little bit scared and a little bit respectful of this Kingdra. Uh, that said, I mean, the Kingdra does have to be careful. There is a fairy type on the field. It is, of course, also very low on health. And uh, that could be uh, an interesting interaction. But at the same time, you know, you just got to uh, maybe call some max guards from your opponent's side of the field and see what you can do there. Yeah, for, for Joao here, maybe reading that the Max Guard might come through for this Kingdra. But at the same time, Kingdra is so fast, maybe just going for some damage. It's going to be a really, really tough call to make for Joao's side of the field as that Tapu Fini and Dragapult are pressuring quite a bit here. So Kingdra definitely feeling unsafe in this situation, wants to be able to go for the Max Guard. But Dragapult does call this correctly and will be going for a Max Phantasm. But Politoed hangs on again. What is going on? Critical survivals for Juan on both accounts. Yeah, both Pokemon, this rain lead that so many people talk about, uh, being able to hang on. Tapu Fini's Moonblast, though, following up into the right slot. So this Kingdra is going to be stuck on its own without its normal and preferred partner. Really good decision making from Jao there, making sure that, hey, I don't want to let this go. But Juan may have baited him a little bit there, may have said, that's fine. You can take out the Politoed. I don't mind because I have a Rillaboom in the back. I'm going to get control of this rain and I'm going to make this Tapu Fini a real issue. Yeah, this is going to be a, a problem for that Tapu Fini Rollaboom, able to set the terrain uh, and be able to go for something like a Grassy Glide right into the Tapu Fini. Uh, this particular Rollaboom for Juan is carrying a Choice Band, so that's not something that Joao really wants to be in the middle of. So instead of being in the thick of things, we'll be bringing Celesteela instead. Dragapult going for a Max Guard here, just to be able to play it safe as the Grassy Glide goes into Celesteela, but look at how little damage that does. I mean, the Celesteel is definitely not uh, too worried about a Grassy Glide at all uh, and, and just is able to 
come in and take that very, very well. Uh, this is going to be the end of the Dynamax turns for these two Dragon-type Pokemon as well, so uh, certainly something to think about as the rest of this game goes on. Uh, the rain is going to be kind of running down as well, which could be impactful for the Kingdra. Definitely needs to capitalize on the last turn or so here. It's very low on health. Uh, it's going to get a little bit of recovery every turn from the grassy terrain, uh, but a, a big Draco Meteor is probably needed if you're Juan uh, in this turn. Yeah, I... I kind of wonder what Joao then does in this situation because uh, while this Kingdra is pressuring the Draco Meteor and we already saw Dragapult use that max guard, uh, Dragapult also isn't fast enough to be able to go for something like a Phantom Force to be able to get itself off the field in time before this Draco Meteor does come out. So Joao has to play this very, very carefully. I really like this turn from Juan. He's not worried about the Celesteela. He's saying, I don't care about that at all. I'm going to double target this slot. I know what your remaining Pokemon is. And even if you do switch it in to take this Draco Meteor, I'm going to catch that on the way in. Um, so really nicely done here. The Misty Surge obviously coming into play, changing things around a little bit from the Grassy Glide and the potential damage there. Uh, there's the Celesteela item activating, actually. The Misty Seed raising its special defense. King just Draco Meteor not hitting. Uh, but importantly, Rillaboom doesn't really care about that and is going to punish mm -hmm. Tapu Fini for reappearing. <laughs> Yeah, that was so smart from Juan, just deciding, hey, well, if Tapu Fini does get switched in here, then I've got the perfect answer for you. But here comes Celesteela now, and with those boosts, we'll be able to deal a decent chunk of damage to the Rillaboom that just took out its partner. Yeah, but the Rillaboom's kind of done its job now, right? It said, you know what, that's fine. Um, you, you know, Rillaboom's taken out the Tapu Fini and is, is happy to probably just sit on the field for a little bit longer and try and weave in some damage somewhere and and see where it can go. I mean, there's still the rain up. Uh, that's still something that this Kingdra can take advantage of and, and keep going with. And with that in mind, you know, it needs to, it still needs to land a Draco Meteor at some point mm -hmm. on this, uh, you know, on this Dragapult. And that's absolutely key here when it comes down to, to managing the end game and managing uh, the terrain and the weather that you've got going on there. Ooh, well, Entei gonna be the last Pokemon here for one as Dragapult goes for Protect. So we're going to see two Protects on the board from Kingdra and Dragapult as Celesteela does go for the Heavy Slam into Ooh. the Rillaboom slot, but Entei takes that very nicely. Yeah, Entei takes that absolutely fantastically. The rain is now over, so this Kingdra's at a definite disadvantage uh, with what it can do, and it's not gonna be able to outrun the Dragapult. Dragapult's certainly gonna be given the option to, to try and outspeed it here and, and just knock it out. So we've got 17 health left that we can see. So uh, plenty going on. Kingdra uh, is going to have to try and weave it in and hope that it doesn't get hit before that. It's a little bit audacious to try, but the rain stopping does mean this Entei is actually in a very good position uh, to try and get some, some damage down on this Celesteela. No rain protecting the Celesteela means Entei can start firing off Sacred Fires free of charge uh, and no drawback to that. Right, the Sacred Fire are going to be able to do so much more damage now that the rain is gone. But Dragapult goes for Dragon Darts here and will be able to connect with Kingdra, knocking it out before Kingdra is able to fire off that Draco Meteor. But we did see the double into the Dragapult, so Entei is going to be able to do just a bit of damage to it for this turn with the Stone Edge. Yeah, Entei realizing that the Dragapult's a bigger concern here. Uh, following up, the Celesteela's going to try to set up for a nice little late game with a Leech Seed, um, but it, it's going to be a tough one. I mean, Entei's still in a position to, to at some point, Sacred Fire it, um, and that's going to be a big problem for the Celesteela, even with uh, a bunch of boosts going down its way. Uh, Rillaboom and Entei, the last pairing, actually, for uh, Juan. Pretty interesting to see them put together. Um, you know, this team does contain the very traditional fire, water, grass core that we've talked about. Mm -hmm. um, and, they, you know, each of them is playing a very, very important part in this game plan. Both Pokemon on uh, Joe's side of the field. I mean, the Dragapult in particular, very low. Uh, Dragapult not always the bulkiest either. Yeah, Dragapult could go down to a couple of attacks here, but. What's important is that we do have the priority Grassy Glide as an option for this uh, Rillaboom, but Dragapult goes for a Protect, just trying to play it a little bit safe here, and Celesteela as well going for a Protect, just to kind of feel the waters out for what Juan is going to do. Yeah, trying to maybe get a little bit of recovery as well from the Grassy Terrain, maybe try and swing the numbers a little bit in, uh, you know, the favor of, of not getting knocked out of your Jow. so um, very slow and steady 
play here. The Entei is getting a little bit back too, though. And what's curious about this Rillaboom being last is it can't get caught by the Leech Seed, right? You can't mm -hmm. uh, get those double Leech Seed recoveries that Celesteela is so famous for. So it's uh, potential to stall out the game. Certainly limited a little bit here. Um, looks like, you know, Grassy Glide just keeps getting locked in. It's in the grassy terrain. It gets the boost. Uh, you can kind of ignore the fact it may be not very effective uh, and just go that way. It looks like Juan's very comfortable in, in what they're going to do to to wrap this one up and, and just say, you know what, I, I know my end game. When you stop protecting, I'm going to get you. Right, and so Rillaboom's Grassy Glide, now that the Protects are out of the way, is going to go first, and Dragapult is going to get knocked out from mm -hmm. that. And that leaves this Entei to be able to fire off the Sacred Fire into this Celesteela, and look at how much damage that does. Yeah, I mean, the Celesteela oh, getting burn burned too. on top of it too. Uh, Sacred Fire really showing its value there and, and making sure that uh, this Entei is super safe. Uh, you, you're not going to be able to sit there if you're if you're Jao and, and recover enough with the burn in play. I mean, the burn really limits your potential recovery, and, and this Celesteela probably knows uh, what's up and is uh, probably just going to try its best, I imagine. Uh, this is, of course, a knockout round. You can't just be turning it in if you are Jao, uh, but it's not looking great for, for Celesteela and the potential to, to stall out the end of this game. Yeah, Rillaboom can still go for like another Grassy Glide here and then Sacred Fire just to finish off the Celesteela. And the burn damage as well is so critical because even though Celesteela is going to go for Protect here, the Leech Seed health regeneration is being mitigated by the burn damage coming through at the end of every turn. Uh, Sacred Fire putting in work again, it did yesterday. Uh, for Juan, you know, and, and the Stone Edge as well did a lot of damage. Perfect damage actually on that Dragapult uh, to, to leave it in range for a grassy terrain boosted grassy glide knockout, which shouldn't usually get away with, but it did in that instance. So a lot riding on this Celesteela being able to buy a lot more turns. Uh, but this Entei is still able to, to land a Sacred Fire and, and wrap this game up for Juan. Yeah, this is, I think, another position where Joao is really trying to use as much of the time left in this game as possible to figure out a game plan for game number two. Celesteela tries to go for the double protect, but it does fail. So Rillaboom able to go for the Grassy Glide here, just being able to do a little bit of damage, but this is the finisher, the Sacred Fire, being able to secure the knockout onto Celesteela and secure game number one for Juan. Yeah, Juan putting himself one step closer to that potential uh, berth in the global finals where they really well played the game there. I mean, there was and also just kind of stall out those turns of Dynamax that were coming through from the Kingdra. So I really liked that. I want to see a little bit more of that as we get into our game number two. We are on match point here. Juan with a 1-0 lead over Joao for right now. Let's see if Joao can come back into this and bring us into a game number three. Uh, Joao did a really good job at working through those rain turns, which you can sometimes get run over, and if you're not careful, then we're going to have the exact same leads from both of these trainers. So Joao, even though he lost it, not too worried about, you know, potentially getting caught out. Thinks he can work through the rain as well. Uh, but, you know, one seen the kind of game plan that Joao's using and, and may be able to respond to that. So they're both going to have to read into what they learned in game number one a little bit and, and try and go from there. I feel like the adaptation that we're seeing from Juan even just at this very moment is already kind of thinking ahead. Seeing that Joao did use the Rage Powder early on in game number one to be able to draw attention away from Dragapult, and also recognizing that Kingdra can, in fact, take a max Wormwind from this Dragapult, just go after the Amoongus, get it out of the way right now, and also just try to remove it from the field. Yeah, don't even mess around. Just get rid of it as soon as possible uh, and then play the rest of the game, you know, with a little bit more damage to kind of accelerate that game plan that we saw in game number one and, and really push it along uh, a little bit quicker at a slightly faster rate and don't lose your Kingdra at the same time. Unsurprisingly, both trainers sticking with their choice of early Dynamax, I think you have to. I think if you're uh, Joao, the, the only thought you can really think is... is okay, well, Dragapult's got to gotta do some work here. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of forces you into that Dynamax. And, and I'd say Dragapult's fallen down the pecking order a little bit of potential Dynamax Pokemon uh, with some of the newer options around. And it, it's interesting to see it uh, be used in that style once again. 
Yeah, but I, I've always loved Dragapult just as a Dynamaxing Pokemon because it is so good at being able to be so fast on the field. But with Kingdra and its Swift Swim ability, plus also getting the max Airstream off, this Kingdra is not getting outsped any time soon. So we did see the Culpa Berry come through from Amoongus, which is going to lessen the amount of damage that that Amoongus is going to take. But Polytoad's following this up with a Ice Beam um, as Dragapult is trying to max that max Airstream. Yeah, I mean, Dragapult matching the Matt's Airstream there, very, very wise. Uh, even though the Swift Stream's in play, you don't want something like the Politoed just getting a natural advantage that uh, you're not able to match at all. Uh, but Politoed's Ice Beam landing into that Amoongus right away. And there it is. Once again, the Rage Powder pulls in two attacks, gives the Dragapult a little bit of time to breathe. But importantly for Juan here, their Kingdra is a lot healthier than it was at the end mm -hmm. of Turn 1 in the last game. So, you know, Game one went well uh, for them and, and being able to kind of respond to that and say, you know what, uh, it's going even better now. Stabu Fini is, is obvious, it's not in the back as a potential switch in, so you can kind of safely try and work in uh, one of those max one wins, as long as you call the potential max guards from this Dragapult correctly on a dual side of the field. Right, and uh, King is just really not holding back any punches here as... We are going to see this Politoed switch out for Rillaboom just to change the terrain again and also put more pressure onto that Tapu Fini. Let's see whether or not this Dragapult does max guard, though. It's going to be a big ask to see exactly what it does. Of course, Rillaboom coming in as an immediate answer to the Tapu Fini, saying, yep, I know what you're doing here, Tapu Fini. I don't want to deal with it anymore, and I'm going to make your life very problematic. Uh, the Dragapult does max guard, uh, so this could be a, a dangerous turn for this Kingdra uh, if it's caught short. Yeah, Tapu Fini should be able to fire off a pretty big attack here, but it is the Moonblast into the Rillaboom here. Mm -hmm. Rillaboom not going to take too much from that, and Kingdra also be able to restore some of its health based off the grassy terrain. That's a really uh, dangerous turn by Juan uh, that they've got away with that. They've got away with that so well because uh, the Moonblast doesn't head towards that Kingdra, thinking that maybe the Max Guards were going to be matched there. Uh, it's kind of an interesting turn from Joao. It's like, well, I, I'm scared of your... Uh, max Whirlwind, so I'm going to max Guard, but I'm also not going to try and capitalize on, on that by attacking with the Moonblast in that slot. So uh, kind of interesting decision making there, but now the perfect pairing are on the field for Juan. Uh, they've got the way to pressure Tapu Fini, they've got the way to pressure this Dragapult, and, and this game could turn quite nasty quite quickly. Uh, Grassy Glide finding its mark into the Dragapult after seeing that Max Guard come through and Kingdra able to follow that up with a Max Warm Wind and Dragapult going down this turn, not going to be able to fire off any more attacks in this game. Joao, just like that, down to their final two Pokemon with that Tapu Fini as well as that Celesteela. Really fantastic pay by, by Joao there. Really understanding that, you know what? The Dragapult's the issue here. I know I can do a good amount of damage. Max Whirlwind might not be able to quite get there, so I'll make sure I get a gra Grassy Glide in there. Uh, I don't think Joao's going to be able to leave the Tapu Fini in. You just can't justify it. So you know what? I'm going to call that switch. I'm then going to put the pressure on, and now this Tapu Fini... Uh, yeah, the Misty Surge comes in. Celesteela's going to get the boost. That's, you know, nice and everything. But at the end of the day, this Rillaboom is going to be able to cause many, many problems uh, for this Tapu Fini. Um, and the Celesteela, Tapu Fini themselves aren't really able to fire back with that much damage. Um, you know, this Kingdra's mm. still got a speed boost from earlier. It's still got Swift Swim going and it's, it's just going to be able to, uh, before anything moves, apply as much damage as it possibly can. You know, it's something else that could happen here is Tapu Fini just could go for a Protect in the face of this Rillaboom. So I kind of don't mind that we might see a little bit of a switch come through here uh, from one side of the field as Rillaboom does uh, find its way out just to be able to reset the terrain a little bit later and be able to get the priority Grassy Glide off into the Tapu Fini as Kingdra goes for the Hydro Pump into Celesteela. And in the rain, we're about to see how much this does. Uh, a lot. Uh, over 50% is the answer to that one. Uh, a huge amount of damage coming down. Tapu Fini oh, trying to take advantage. Oh, yeah, it's trying to take advantage of the rain itself with its muddy water, but not getting there. And uh, this Politoed switch, uh, really, really good for Juan there. Uh, so nice. I mean, obviously not taking muddy water damage is huge, but uh, yeah, we're back to the good old fashioned rain lead. Um, and really all this rain lead needs to do with is the Celesteela, right? The Tapu mm -hmm. Fini's doomed as soon as Rillaboom makes an appearance at the end of the game. 
And you're going for Protect, maybe reading that this Tapu Fini is going to try to go for a move into the Kingdra, like that Moonblast, but Celesteela also going to be protecting itself. Moonblast does come out right into the Protect of that Kingdra, and Polytoast Hydro Pump also going to be a whiff here. Yeah, I mean, it's into a Protect, not as bad as the Muddy Water. Uh, double miss, but uh, uh, certainly not a premium turn, and, and Joao, you know, they're not getting a clear advantage of Celesteel needs to be set up and, and you, you know you can't rely on Tapifini when you know the Rillaboom is in the back and mm -hmm. there's going to be no way to change the terrains even without the rain uh, and the boost this is still going to hurt and the Kingdra is still going to be fast from its earlier max airstream as well. Tapufini uh, able to get a little bit of revenge here onto the Kingdra, so we'll be able to knock it out and try to even up the score a little bit, but Celesteela is sitting at such low health that Politoed able to go for a Hydro Pump too, just to be able to clean up that Celesteela, get the knockout, and now it's Tapufini left, which, well, kind of expecting this Rillaboom to come back out right now. Yeah, we won't even need to see the Entei in this game. Uh, just being able to sit on the bench and, and do nothing, not needed yet. Uh, would have been there to help up with the uh, the Celesteela, but the same four coming through for, for Joao, and that four was very well answered by the four that uh, Yuan bought and, and has just been such a, a team mismatch. Some really good decision-making by uh, both players uh, to try and kind of weave in those advantage, but yeah, there it is. Grassy Glide wraps up this set and gives us another player, Juan Na, moving in to the Global Finals. What a fantastic set, though.